folks, I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily T.A. wrap. Where we take a look at these markets, and we do it from a neoclassical perspective. Each time we look, we ask ourselves, what happened today? What might it tell us about the coming days? I do this show four times a week, Monday through Thursday, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, here from the base of the Rocky Mountains. Folks, it was a big day up. Uh, you know, the laggards uh, were the ones you'd want lagging. The leaders were the ones you'd want leading. Russell up uh, a nice clip, 1142, 28 points. Wow, didn't seem like it, but 2.54%, I guess. Uh, I'm still a little untrusting of these numbers on the Russell, so let me, let me double check it with a different quote here. Uh, let me see, 1126. Uh, yeah, it's 16 points higher, not 26. So anyway, that the quote looks wrong again, but it was up. It was the leader today. Composite up 1.2 percent. NDX that was the the big thrust one more time. Dow was up half a percent. SPX up a little over half a percent, 11 points, 1911, almost 1912. Remember, there were ABCD structures, two of them. 1900 already been clipped. 1904 got clipped today. Pushed on up. 1914 is the weekly. We're two points away from that one. It looks to me like that one's going to get clipped as well. And as early as tomorrow, Dow Jones is going to try to hit the highs. We can look at the charts and see what they look like. Let's start with the NDX, though, because that's the powerhouse. Uh, you know, folks, for, for, I mean, just a week ago, there was still a good possibility this market could break. And here we are a week later, and this is how fast things can turn when you've been going sideways so long. You know, a week later, here we are, the NDX breaks over these highs, starts to stretch, and then really starts to get the momentum now. Got it today. Uh, pressing up against that last breakdown bar. There's actually two of them up there, but this is the one with volume. 37.17, it was about 40 higher. It got to it and over it today, 37.23. A big move doesn't have the volume, but you know it doesn't really care right now. And and you know the volume. I, I always look at volume, and I realize that volume is a tell with respect to conviction. But just because the conviction isn't there does not mean it can't go higher. Once it starts, you know it can go higher as long as there are more buyers than there are sellers in terms of. Uh, uh, the quantity being bought. If, if nobody wants to sell, price has to go up to entice sellers and that's what is, has been happening and is happening. And I want to flip from this chart. I wanted to start with it because this is the strength chart. This is being pushed, has been pushed the last week by Apple. Another big move again in Apple. Has been pushed, continues to be pushed by Google. These are the big guys. But today, you actually saw others starting to clip in, like Priceline starting to move. Uh, some of these others, like uh, Oracle, was, was right at the top trying to move. I saw a question on it, so I'll hit it while I'm here. You know, it failed at the highs again. You want to pick it up as it comes back into this low part, right? The, the, the intersection between these two bars is where you want it. April 1st, March 31st bars. Uh, but there was a lot of names moving. I saw some of these other names that have been, you know, killed like FEYE up a big, you know, another four or five percent today. It's had a big move, but there's just there's gobs of them. And if I go over to my tech board over here and just, you know, glance down the list, uh, let's just see what's here. So like, which ones move big today, percentage wise? Here's another one. Now, oh, the biotech started to move. Celgene was another one. Celgene's already back up those you know, the breakdown bar highs. This is the strongest one in the tech sector. Um, it, you know, go down the list. There's a bunch of them. Uh, Xilinx, I think, moved pretty good today. Another one that it's kind of been overlooked is AMAT. AMAT started moving. So chips are starting to move. Everything's starting to move. The market is transitioning. Was, was on the verge of a breakdown on the small caps, potentially on the NASDAQ, was trying to break out primarily on the S&P 500 now on the big cap technology with the NDX. And so that has flipped it around 
And I'm not here to gripe with the market. If the market wants to go higher, I'll shut up and go with it. I mean, there's really nothing else you can do. It's not the ideal breakout. It would have been a lot better if we had flushed down, washed some stuff out, cleansed the system a bit, and then took off. But that's not the way it worked. And if it doesn't work that way, it doesn't work that way, and you got to go with it. Let's look at the small caps. Small caps got over two swing point highs today. Those two swing point highs, everything today was suspect breakouts everywhere. Uh, the S&P is going to be a suspect breakout when we look at it. we got suspect breakouts here as well, but it does get its over them, holds over them, wants to push higher. The thing now is not whether the market wants to push higher. I've been waiting to tell, have the Russell tell me that it wants to trade higher. And the, and the way it would tell me that is for it to go sideways. And now it has the sideways range. Uh, we'll see where the top wants to be, but it broke over those swing point highs. You break over two of them, you can certainly get another one to two, you know, two to three bar push. Uh, so we've got, you know, another two to three bars potentially pushing here, maybe takes us up to the next set of highs. Uh, but the Russell finally turns, and that's what's been missing. And it does it today. Volume's not great, but it's not horrible. And you've got to, you've got to change. Uh, look at the S&P 500. S&P gets over the highs. I actually got over it on the open. That high was uh, 1902. 29.1 does 29.1. Slightly less volume. Going to be another suspect breakout to the north. But it is over it. And within a couple points of finishing out the weekly ABCD structure. So if we push up the weekly there's been an ABCD structure that's been in place here for quite a while now, and uh, that structure is just about done finally. And it was to this area, back down, and back up, and it's within a couple points now. So we're finally going to get the completion of a large ABCD on the weekly time frame, and that has, <laughs> I mean, you talk about a long time coming, and I mean, it is a weekly, but if you do the width of these, it's actually just about the same width. It doesn't seem like it, but I was looking at it earlier today. You know, it's symmetric is what I'm trying to say. If you've got a symmetric, you know, kind of a symmetric two pushes higher, this one's coming up, going to finish. And that brings me to the next point, which is now that we're getting the breakouts and the fact that, that to some extent on a very short-term basis, they are stretched again. Right, and we've already finished up ABCD structures on a number of the sectors and indexes. That suggests to me that yes, we could mill around, maybe push, you know, maybe we go sideways tomorrow, get another push on Thursday, and then we get some sort of a correction into the news. Maybe that's the way it works out with the, the, the Europeans, you know, the ECB. ECB in a week, as of tomorrow, Supposedly, it's going to ease. And a lot of this, I am certain, has to do with Europe easing. Now, what gets delivered and what is expected may not be the same thing. We may see, after this push, we may see some sort of a pullback into the news, which actually would be better for the market. If it wants to stretch up for another week straight, I think it's going to be very hard to see this market go higher after that news, unless Draghi really takes the you know the ball and knocks it all out of the park, and and I kind of doubt that's what he's going to do. I suspect what he's going to do is negative interest rates, and he's going to do another quarter quarter percent on the easing, and that to me is already baked in. And why do I say that? Because if I go over and I look at the German DAX, uh, let me get it up here. If I look at this guy. He stretches up, he goes, does a confirmed breakout on his, uh, the volume looks wrong, something happened here, but it was confirmed, it looks like we got maybe over the weekend, the holiday, something happened to the quote, but that was a confirmed breakout. No, it was suspect, it does show it's suspect. Okay, well I must be thinking of another chart. So a suspect breakout, but it does stretch higher, right, and today you get some volume coming into it, the DAX 
definitely you know doing the leg up thing this one also has finished up but but the fact that the DAX has finally taken off is telling me that the uh, uh, the the German situation certainly believes and it looks like it's going to try to reach to there looks like it is going to be definitely something next week it's it's baking that in and it's probably going to be what I just suggested otherwise I think this would have run more already now if he surprises and does even more easily than we expect or if Japan and or China steps up and does some more easing then these markets can run even higher so my take here at this point is yes it does look like the trend change is finally upon us however you want to buy retraces off of breakouts that are suspect and that is because you know roughly half of them come back more than half of them come back but they come back within six bars and roughly half of them fail so you want to watch the retrace here you've actually got a nice stretch up but if we look at our markets one more time uh, it's a different situation here these are suspect breakouts this one actually got a pretty good stretch if tomorrow it stretches farther you know you think about it this way Let me, you know, I don't know that I've said this before anytime I see a breakout the first thing I think is okay what does the retest regen look like right because because there's a high probability on a suspect breakout which this is within six bars this is going to come back and do some sort of a test so what can mitigate the high probability and it's basically a coin flip half of them fail half of them succeed on a retest regen after six bars if they're suspect in that case as this thing comes back what can make that probability go higher maybe a you know maybe a 60 percent chance that it holds or maybe a 70 percent chance what makes it higher well what makes it higher is the high high stretches before it comes back why because then by the time it comes back it's already traveled a pretty good distance by the time it gets there if it comes back immediately right it can certainly break it much easier so what you really want to see is the stretch right the stretch is what gives you the higher probabilities of success on the retest and that's what this is all going to be about it's going to be about the retest regen and folks there's no volume on the high or on the breakout so if you get any kind of volume expansion on the way back, you can easily just slice back up underneath this again. Right, do you follow my, my drift? Hopefully. Um, so that to me is what one has to be concerned with. So, you know, if this market is really going to be bullish, you're going to see it try to stretch higher tomorrow or the next day. If not, then it's going to come back. It's going to retest real quick and the probabilities are much higher that it break. Okay, as far as probabilities, let's go look at... Uh, well, I already, already, I, I glanced through the world markets already. Europe looks to me like it's about ready to, to try to take a rest again, just like our markets, if it can keep stretching. And when I say Europe, I'm talking about the big three, the FTSE, the, the, uh, the uh, French CACs. Those two uh, are, are actually struggling to reach higher. The DAX is taking them higher is what's happening. And so it's really going to be when the DAX wants to pull back or not. And right now the DAX looks pretty good, so I suspect they're going to hang there and probably not give it up. If I look at the major sectors domestically, the strong ones keep pushing, although the transports, they did a doji today after a pretty big stretch, so the transports look to me like they may try to take a break here. But now we've got some others kicking in. And this we haven't had until now. Here's the SOX. SOX going after the last of the breakdown bars. And, and, and what's been happening the last two days now on Friday and again today is that we're slicing through areas that should give some sort of decent resistance, right? We should see sellers show up. They're not. And if you don't see sellers show up, the result is higher prices that's what's happening and it's slicing through it as if they're not even there and when you see that kind of action which we're really going to see here in a second on the goal to the downside you don't want to step in front of that until it tells you it's done and right now these aren't telling us that they're telling us they can push a few more bars so socks starting to push 
We did see a test failure on the XLB. So IYT, XLB, probably not going to push anymore. XLE struggled all day long, so that one's probably not going to push anymore. The XLF, though, all of a sudden, they're buying the down and out sectors, right? Money wants to rotate, break a two swing point highs, no volume, suspect, still going to try to reach up into this next resistance in the last of the breakdown bars. Finally gets over the 4, 410 bar. Now it's going to go after the 4.4, which everybody else is already just about over. So the XLF finally getting its stretch. So as you can see, what does that mean to me? That means just like we saw in tech, PCLE and some of these others, the money's running into those places that are most beat up. And why does that happen? Well, because that's where the most money can be made the fastest, right? And those are trades. Those are not holds, usually. More than likely, they're running into them because they want to flip them. They want to make some quick money because nobody's made any money this year. They want to make some quick money and flip out of them. XLI. XLI uh, is testing into that uh, big breakdown, the last breakdown bar. Uh, this one can get over the highs. I don't, I don't know that it's going to stop here. Uh, so that one's going to do a test tomorrow. Uh, the XLK, basically the NDX, just going nuts to the upside. Uh, the safety sectors, so there's the XLK. This one's more than finished its ABCD structure uh, and has just about, I believe, finished it on the weekly now, too. So the latest weekly would be from here to there and back down and back up. Yeah, it's almost done, not quite. Looks like a little bit more. Let me get the numbers on it. So that's. Um, uh, 3392. That's three. That's about 270. 3780. 3780. And yeah, it's almost done. So another 20 cents or so. So XLK probably getting to the point where it's going to finally take a break. So it finished off ABCD structure on the daily already and now finishing off on the weekly. Uh, and the daily was done last Friday. It was finished last Friday. Uh, XLP, XCU, safety sectors, not doing anything, just range trading. XLV now back up over easily, right? It's, it's cleared this, and now it's going into the 4.4 bar. There's also a, four, uh, a 3.21 bar there. It's set up a little differently. Doji, but at the highs, that looks like it will test tomorrow. XLY will test a little bit higher as well. So there's enough rotation that could see follow through that will allow these markets to try to stretch a little bit more if they so choose. I don't see anything showing a reversal yet, but at the same time, as I suggested earlier, you want to buy the retrace, not the breakout, especially when you have the divergence that we have in these markets, uh, even, even still today. Uh, they're starting to all go the same way, but they're still divergent. The, the ones that have been beaten down the most are catching up quick, though. Over in the ox markets, uh, bonds. And, you know, the bonds, they just don't care. They just keep going, right? It, this market just doesn't want to stop. So stocks up, bonds up. Nobody cares. They just buy more bonds. Going to test the high before it's over. I don't know if it comes immediately or not. It's probably going to test into the bottom of it tomorrow. 1360, there is resistance on the weekly, so I don't expect the bonds to keep going, uh, but the bonds uh, have been pressing. And the real story was commodities were just wiped out today across the board. Here's gold, breaks three swing point lows, volume expands. That should get two to three bars to the downside now. So it's a break to the downside usually, and that, that's the highest probability trade that's out there actually. And that is, is that when you break multiple swing points um, on multiple time frames, and this was only a one time frame, is it one or two? Well, we don't know on the weekly yet, and that's why. Uh, but if you break it on multiple time frames, you can get the fastest move possible. Right now, you got three swing points, all of them broken today. Volume expands. That's not a good sign. I would expect this to try to carry through. If it does do a quick retest, regen, it's a place to escape if you're in it. Uh, if it does head down lower, uh, the weekly is going to be the next. Uh, oops, the weekly is going to be the next uh, place to look at it. 
and let me grab this up. Here's the weekly. So it's under this big bar. That's the bar that's been holding it up. It finally breaks it. Coming into this high. What it's really coming into is this high, which is 120.77. It's at 121.75 low today. So that's another buck down, another ten dollars. And if you look over here, it's already deep into this big bar now, and uh, you know that says it can go to the bottom. Now remember, on the weekly, this has been. Let me. Um, let me change this. What I want to do is bring up, let me just pop this to the monthly. This has been a long downtrend for quite a while. right? So, so you had a range trade up here that finally broke on this bar. That starts another downtrend. So now it was doing a range down here. And this is on the monthly. This range, this big bar, this dark one here, this big bar has been holding price ever since. It tested already on the downside on the weekly and the monthly and held. And that test was coming back into this area where there's significant support. If it comes back down again and tries to break it again, I suspect one more time it's going to have trouble. The point of bringing this chart up is that for a market to turn just like the one that we just saw turning here uh, with the S&P 500. For a market to turn, it needs some testing, right? It needs to test. And until it tests and puts in the rounded bottom and gets enough of the test to find out that there are no sellers at lower prices, right, it can go sideways for quite a while. That's what it's been doing. Quite a while dates back almost a year now. And so a year in this range, but just look back before before it broke down over here, it was almost a year and a half. So this can go on for a long time. This is two and a half years of a correction in the gold market. This may be the turn. I'm thinking it still could be the turn, but you don't know that until the test. And right now, given the breakdown today, it's going to do some more testing, it looks like, to the downside. All right, let's see here. Some uh, questions. Let me try to answer some of these before I run out of time. So what's the first one here? Uh, EWZ, hi, right, thanks, can you look at, let me look at Oracle, okay, so Oracle, let's see what Oracle looks like, so Oracle, actually I pulled up already, didn't I, because I saw that as I was coming on, um, I, I still think, you know, from what I was just saying earlier, is you really want to look at this intersection, this is the area that you want to look at, and with, with technology trying to break out, right, this has a nice consolidation, has a nice big push up, I'm assuming this was on earnings, I don't remember, uh, that was April, probably was. So uh, nice earnings breakout, retrace, testing, right? This thing is going to break over these highs. It's already had a break over it, but still wants to break higher. It's just that you want to try to catch the little retrace here as this thing, you know, does this sideways stuff. You want to buy towards the bottoms of these if you can. I don't think you have to hurry in this market. You know, I know that, you know, maybe it feels like we need to panic now. I don't think that's the case. I think what you have to do is be judicious about turning and getting longer as the market allows, assuming the market uh, is going to continue up. And uh, you know the, that seems to be the trade finally. Um, it's taken four months to get there and it's been arduous, but it looks like that's what the market wants to try and do finally. Uh, so EWX, uh, what is EWX? That's like uh, that's an ETF, small caps. Oh. Oh, this one's actually alarmed two or three times on our trading signals. Um, yeah, it's the small caps in emerging markets. And, and this, again, you know, all of these trades, and, and there's not much volume here, so I, I don't hardly look at these that much because there's just not enough. I mean, 53K, you know, if you're, if you're buying something like this, uh, you really got to have a small amount that you can just hang on to because you, you're not going to be able to, you know, you can, I haven't looked at it, but I assume the bid ask spread is pretty wide. So, again, you would want to just, I would wait for it to come back to a support area, and the green area here seems to be a decent one. So, let it come back in, do a retest regen, and then, then see what it looks like. Um, yeah, the bottom of this guy probably, 4840 in that area. Wouldn't push it, just let it come back in. I probably wouldn't trade this, though. It's pretty, you know, there's just not enough volume there. Uh, there's probably better places to put your money. 
Uh, Ozark, is that the uh, is that the bank, the regional O Z R K? Oops, let me spell it right. O Z R K. Yeah, the Bank of the Ozarks. This is a stock I looked at some time back and actually liked a lot. This was like two years ago. O Z R K. I was talking with. Um, I was doing an interview when I talked about it. Yeah, so here's the monthly on it so you can get a feel for what it looks like. You know, just nice, big, long trend, the higher. Uh, let's put it on the weekly. And yeah, so pushes down. Yeah, this is, this is nice. So it tests this low. It gets underneath it. It's got a little push back up. And now if we go back to the daily, yeah, this is going to be hard to trade because what you really, the trade, you know, it should find resistance in here, right? Because you got this, this big bar, that big bar. And they're wide price spread and high volume. So they're going to be hard, you know, that, that's where the fight will be. And so if one wants to trade it up to that, you know, you're only talking about half a percent or something. It's not that much. The real trade is to let it go there and then fade back to here and buy it. That's the real trade. Or if this fades immediately, buy it. Because then you've got a hammer reversal here, even though it's on slightly higher volume. Um, it still looks like a decent reversal. You can take and put your stops up underneath here, right, if you're buying in here. And the ideal situation, like I said, would be that it comes up here first, then comes back, all right? Because then you have the test, and you can see what that test looks like. Um, this is a longer term play, so you can be kind of careful about how you enter into it. Uh, I would be trying to buy it at least into this area uh, if if it were me. Uh, and it looks pretty good. It's a good stock. It's a, it's a good, you know, they, they run what they run themselves well, um, earnings and, and growth. Uh, did the Ozark fail today? Uh, I don't think it did. It looked like it was over it. 6010. Yeah, it's over it. So it gets over it and stays over it. So, you know, you got a break. So it takes it sideways again, but again, I would, I would, I would rather be patient, let it test, let it come back, and then if that test is on decent volume, you know, then you got a heads up that this thing probably is, is got a range trade at worst, probably going to be heading back up again, and you could put in for, I assume you want it for a longer term play. Okay, um, you know, Marcus did what they had to. <laughs> it, it, y y you can't fault a market that continues to rise. I mean, is it ideal? No. Is it going to go straight up like we saw last year? I doubt that seriously. Is it going to work higher? It's doing everything it needs to to start doing that finally. And it's taken it, you know, what is this, five months to really get going. So now what you really want to see in the next two days is more of a stretch. If you get more of a stretch, probabilities are even higher that that in fact is what you're going to see. Some sort of retrace and a push higher again. And then one can make some decent trades as a result of that. That would be the ideal case now. If it comes back immediately, makes it harder, right? Because then it has a better chance of failing and getting a deeper retrace. And even though that can still be traded, uh, it just makes it more difficult. More, you know, It's going to make it more difficult to pull the trigger. I still think the way things are trading here, uh, this is finally starting to turn the corner. And... Uh, and honestly, a, lot, you know, a week ago, I didn't think that would happen. Not at all. And you know, that's the market, though. You've got you to gotta take it for what it's worth. Uh, second swing point high. Oh, OK. Um, Tommy's asking me on Ozark again. Uh, let's see on the second one. It's 60.55. Yeah, it did. But you got over one. You fell into the other one. Yeah, and so that, again, that, that, yeah, that, that's another reason to be patient. Uh, it hasn't quite got over it. I think your real test is going to be up here, though, on the 60, you know, 380 or whatever the area is. Looks like about 6370. Uh, that will be the real test. But yeah, I, I wouldn't take that as a big deal here. There is there's a volume here, and that's probably what he's struggling with. But uh, on a longer term play, you want to see it come back and then try to get long. All right, gotta go, folks. Thanks a lot.
appreciate it. Have a great night, and um, you know, catch catch me here tomorrow. We'll we'll take it again. And see what it wants to do. Good night, folks. Take care.